Okay, welcome to this quick tutorial on basically how I close the toes of my sock knitting machine sock. Yeah, that made sense. All right, so what you see is all you need here for this. Um, in addition, the stitches I have um, had on the machine, I'll show which ones those are. I have four stitch markers in use here, it's two on each side. So this is what the sock basically looks like. It doesn't matter what this part looks like for you. What for you at this point is how to close this part here. So my rule of thumb when it comes to working on the sock knitting machine is to use a similar fiber as scrap whenever it touches the sock yarn so that the tension's the same. If, these, if this material here was super thin thread, you'd really just be working with a nightmare, just trust me. Um, all right, so let's, what I like to do is I like to turn my sock inside out to start. So let's do that first. Looking at your sock, you will see if you've done what I've done, um, you have on the machine, you finished your sock, you um, added the scrap yarn. And as a good tip, add your... Um, sock markers or your stitch markers actually on the first row the first stitch on the top and the bottom one the first stitch down here too so both first stitches are marked on the right at the beginning of the corner and the same thing over here on this side by marking them there's less likely that you'll forget them that they'll get pulled in and you won't see them and forget to secure them all right, so you've got those there and you've got those there. Um, for every sock that I do, the last row I do, I always make sure before I work the toe that I've switched the stitches back to regular cylinder needles. So I don't know if you can tell there that I have in this example, I actually have a ribbed sock. So this is using the ribber, um, which looks different than mock rib. Mock rib is just the space a row of unknitted knit stitches with just bars where this is actually a row of of um, on this side it appears as knitting but right down here at the corner these are all just regular knit stitches on this side you see the pearls so all you see here are pearl stitches basically the point there being is this last row or first row depending on how you look at it where you can see the light blue this is all the same orientation stitch which is what we're looking for Whenever you do kitcheneering, if you want an even result, you want to have a, an even approach. And that means doing the same kind of stitches all the way across. So this will make more sense as we go. Um, honestly, this once you set yourself up um, in the beginning of closing the toe, the rest of it's super monotonous and very easy to do. So this sock is a 72 cylinder created sock. Um, so there's a, quite a few stitches I need to close, but not too many. So thread your needle with your sock yarn. You'll see that the tail, uh, when I finished it, it came off the sock here. I can see that there. Make sure that these stitches aren't too big, that they've been kind of snugged up good. So because we are on the corner, the corners always have a certain approach. This is how I do it. Uh, each corner is going to have almost like an elbow or an intersection kind of stitch. Basically, if you looked at that there, it might be a little bit hard to see. There's one bar right here, right there. And it's kind of in the, the apex of the, um, the corner. So what I want to do is snug up my top row of stitches there just so it's nothing too loose and funky um, the path that we're going to take with our needle is in that elbow stitches I'm going to call it or intersection it's our first pass and now that we're on the bottom let's just reorient orientate keep it horizontal let's take off the stitch marker now that we have it Okay, so the trick here is what is up goes up, what is down goes down. So by keeping this, these two rows kind of um, train track-like, where you have this top row and then you have this bottom row and they're kind of parallel, 
it does make it a bit easier for you, okay? So we're in that corner intersection. Now we're going to orient from down up. So the first thing we do is we capture the first stitch on the bottom. Now we wanna go back to that elbow stitch. There we go. And just pull up. Now try not to over tighten this. There we go, just like that. And now that from the top, we wanna to capture that first row of stitches from the top down. And so what we do now is for each time that we make a pass, we pass with two stitches. So we're on the top, we're gonna to go back, diagonally to that first row, there we are, and then go down. So this is the needle pattern that we're gonna to continue to do throughout. Let's take off that first top stitch marker, snug it up a bit, it's a bit loose. Ensure that you're holding your two rows of stitches. All right, there we go. So now we all we do is this continuous pattern. So go to the neighbor on the bottom, Go to the prior diagonal and go up. Go to the neighbor on the top. Go to the diagonal on the bottom. Go through. And just see, we're repeating that.
All right, as we come to the almost the end of our joining or our kitchenering, we make sure that we, when we end the procedure of what we're doing is we do what we did when we started. So that all sounds really complex, but it really isn't. So continue on over until you get to your stitch markers. If you were to Kitchener without joining that kind of corner intersection or elbow as I call it, stitch, then you're gonna find that it kind of creates a squarish kind of point without kind of um, emerging of the stitches. So do try to make sure that when you first start and when you end, you always include the corner of um, that stitch which will make more sense again in a minute when we get to this side. By including it, you kind of just weave the ends in, which is quite nice. All right, so we are down to the last two stitches, which are great that we can see them because they're marked. If you hadn't marked it, that's fine, but what happens is sometimes these, these last stitches can be hidden because this stitch marker is actually holding them in place. Um, and if they uh, were just left there with the scrap holding them, they might have just by tension kind of been sucked in and you wouldn't see them and miss them. And then when you remove the scrap, it would come undone. So the bottom run, bottom stitch, we know horizontally, we come on over and as we continue on with our regular pattern. First, we take off that bottom stitch marker. We no longer need it and start with our, continue with our pattern, diagonal up there. And again, coming back down, we grab that stitch marker off and same pattern, diagonal. All right, so now the last step then is to do that elbow stitch again, which is right there. Otherwise you see there's a hole there and it wouldn't kind of merge nicely together. So we'll go down. We're on the down, so we come back up we want to aim for that last top stitch diagonal, just in our same pattern. There you go. And then what I choose to do from here is I generally just like to kind of come back to the side here. Maybe even, you know, do whatever you want here. This is pretty much fair game. All right, good. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll remove the scrap yarn and my needle so I don't drop it. because It does that. Turn it back inside out. So this is what you've got now. You've got this trapped sock scrap. Scrap weight sock, lots of words there. So um, basically all I like to do is uh, being cautious, I just remove one of the scrap yarn um, legs, so to speak, making sure not to cut your sock yarn and I'll pull on it and it'll come undone. Some people use um, a cord that you pull on. They refer to that cord as ravel cord just to make it an easy removal. Um, and that's certainly one approach. I personally don't choose to use a cord that I can easily pull out that's special for that just because I find it's often not the same tension as the sock yarn. And I, I, I would rather not kind of change the tension of the needles. I want everything to match and be easy. It's, so there we go, I've cut a couple times all the way around. I like to be extra cautious here. I mean, you can be as MacGyver, as Houdini as you wish, but I like to just do things in small increments to make sure I'm not pulling on the wrong things. So here is now this tail I can pull on, which I've just easily done. Now all those stitches are undone, which is quite nice uh, because this, darker green that you're seeing here is a old sock yarn. It's it's quite durable. I can pull on it quite good and remove a bunch. Um, I don't know if you saw that when I was uh, kitchenering, I caught the scrap, so I split it. And that's why you, it's better to do this slowly because if you've caught it again, like here, you don't want to challenge your sock yarn. You just want to release the scrap if that makes any sense best to be extra cautious in my opinion all right so here we go let's pull the next little zip tie 
All right, and it'll be all tight. And if you find one side is a bit too tight, you can just proceed to another section. Let's see here, it's a bit convoluted. Let's go to the other side. All right, using your needle helps kind of just undo specific area of stitches just to make it easier to remove. I don't know about you, my fingers are not that small. There we are. So identify the first row, which is this one here. Pull on it. If we identify the second row and pull on it, it won't remove it from the sock and it'll just tighten everything. So again, locate first row, pull on it. There you are, that was successful quite a bit. All right, and just do whatever it takes to take off that scrap. I use often use a scrap yarn that's an acrylic of equal weight. Of course, you know, this is way easy off camera because it behaves. Once it's on camera, man, this stuff acts up so much. Okay. So this is how a challenging one will be, but I almost never have this much issue with <laughs> removing a scrap. But always on camera. All right. There'll be a point where the first row, it'll seem you pull on it and it's actually the second row. So just like that was the second row. When I pulled on it, it just got tighter. It didn't, didn't undo it. Bump the camera like crazy. Go. So, I don't expect you'll have this miss issues. Sometimes it just does what it wants. And I must have divided the sock yarn a couple times with the needle when I went through it. So it's all my fault, don't worry. There we go. Perfect. All right, let's move our mess. So when we are done on the toe side of the sock, you're gonna see no seam. When you run your fingers over it, it's smooth, smooth. Now the true shape of your sock you're, won't be known until after you wash it. When the stitches say, okay, fine, I will sit here just fine, don't worry. All right, and then when you look at your sock here, there's no seam. It feels really nice, it'll feel really good. It'll get your against your, your toe. So all we have to do now is manage the tail, make sure it won't undo. I like to go like five stitches. Um, I like to also just kind of stay towards the closer part of the seam, just trying to reduce any extra bumps and lumps in the sock for when it's in your shoe. So just basically trap the yarn tail. I like to go at least five, five stitches because you certainly don't want anything to undo when it's in the wash. And so that would be wrong. And more work. Who wants more work? All right, so you can go five minimum. You can do what works for you. I'm just gonna do with what I feel. What a lot of, and always harder on camera. Maybe a couple more. Ba -ba -ba. All right, so that's it. Pull a little bit, cut, it'll sit back under a stitch. That's it.